an inhaler. Mm-hmm. Uh, the song Inhaler. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> shit, <laughs> shit, love. Oh my god, the dream. Yeah, hopefully one day I can get my tune on that. That's, that's, that's what I'm aiming for. Lana Del Rey, wow. Uh, what a woman. Um, an amazing writer. It was last January. She came over when me and Jamie T were writing. We started writing. We had this week booked out um, to write some tunes over in LA. And she came over um, the next day. And me and Jamie were writing Loaded. The first tune that I put out, and um, she's like, "Play that for, play it again." And, she, and uh, she was like, oh, that's, "That's that's pretty." She was that chorus though. She was, "Can I try something?" And then she like just basically did a chorus off the bat that was better than mine and Jamie's, and we were like, "Holy shit, man!" Do you know what I mean? Just sat on the sofa, and um, yeah, she's uh, yeah, she's special, man. Yeah. Again, weirdly, that is reminds me, or coup de gras reminds me a bit of, I mean, I do have asthma and that, but when we were doing that song inhaler, I didn't have a chorus and we were in the studio and it was just like laying on my amp or on the table or whatever. Let's say the amp for the story. And, um, and I just started like, uh, you know, shouting that. And then again, that sort of stuck. And sometimes those, those things are, are sort of the best, really, weirdly, you know. Yeah, well, we've been working with them. We've done a couple of little collections with them. I mean, I love Fred Perry anyway, and that sort of... Um, and when that opportunity came, it, it felt um, right to do, you know. You know, from being a, a kid, obviously, your style changes, do you know what I mean? But when you're younger, that Lacoste, Fred Perry thing, was very prominent and it still is, do you know what I mean? Like I still wear that gear. Yeah. So even though, you know, now you're dressing in leopard or whatever, it to me it's still um it's still very much part of me, you know what I mean? That was um that was one of them I used to play the sax in school. Uh and then that was one of them moments when we were doing the puppet thing and we were like, oh should we do a cover for Glastonbury, you know? And there's all these ones going, um, getting kicked about me, like, oh, let's do the Moonish Daydream, Bowie. And then I think it was, could have been me, or me, it piped up and was like, what about the sax? You know, there's the sax bit in it. And I'll fuck, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do the sax bit. I'll, I'll get it out, I'll dust it off. I haven't played it for 15 years. And then um, when I got it out, and then I was like, you know, because you've got to like build the whole fucking, I'd do one note, my mouth would be numb. Right. And then it was like for weeks up to it, I was like, why the fuck did I say I'll do this? And like the one time I'm going to test out playing the saxophone in 15 years is at Glasgow, you know what I mean? But like this, the whole pressure of it, yeah, it was, I, was, I, I did shit myself, but um, it was, I've got to thank Al's dad for that because he can play sax and he, he taught me the part. And he, he came down and uh, I've got a, he, he sort of, um, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have done it really. He taught it me and like showed me how to sort of, you know, get it back again. But it was, um, yeah, that was a bit of, yeah, it was a fun moment though. But I'm glad I did it and just about pulled it off. Cause it's only about a 20 second solo. And by the end of it, I was like numb, it had gone, and I was like, you fucking couldn't read. But I just about, I think the last note probably was like, Rrr.